Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the drug treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so we're in the process of discussing the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. So we've discussed that what happens in uh, potentially the years preceding uh, the development of joint symptoms is that you have this pre-articular phase of rheumatoid arthritis where you um, get a failure in immunological tolerance and you activate the humoral adaptive immune response against uh, proteins uh, that are made by human cells, basically self-proteins, autoantigens. And the thing that these autoantigens all have in common is that they appear to all be citrullinated proteins. Now, uh, sooner or later, one of the uh, citrullinated proteins which you produce an antibody against will be one of these citrullinated proteins that's present in the synovium. So remember we discussed that the enzyme which uh, converts arginine residues into citrulline residues within proteins is this peptidyl arginine deaminase enzyme and in the uh, synovial tissues you have uh, present the peptidyl arginine uh, deaminase 2 and the peptidyl arginine deaminase 4 enzyme uh, and therefore they can create uh, citrullinated proteins within the synovium. So sooner or later what will happen is you produce an adaptive immune response response against one of these uh, antigens that is uh, within uh, the synovial membrane. Okay, now, uh, all of these antibodies which are directed against uh, autoantigens, which are citrullinated proteins, are grouped together as anti-citrullinated protein antibodies. And the presence of these anti-citrullinated protein antibodies within the blood also has another name. So these antibodies collectively are also known as rheumatoid factor, or RF for short, rheumatoid Factor. So the presence of rheumatoid factor within the blood uh, can be seen years before the onset of joint symptoms, basically. Now, uh, the reason that these uh, immune complexes do not initiate, sorry, the reason that these uh, anti uh, citrullinated protein uh, 4 antibodies, for we said that we were going to use citrullinated protein 4 as our example of a protein which was present within the synovial membrane, the reason that the presence of these antibodies in the blood doesn't initially cause any disease is because they can't get out of the blood and into the interstitial fluid of the synovial. Okay, so in order to actually uh, get um, the onset of rheumatoid arthritis joint symptoms, what has to happen is a transition phase. So let's now discuss what happens in the transition phase. Now you might just think that, okay, all we need to happen is we need some inflammatory response to occur in the uh, joint. Maybe you injure the joint, or maybe you get some bacterial infection in the joint. All you need is for a uh, some sort of insult to the joint, which will cause an inflammatory response. That will then allow uh, the anti-citrullinated protein uh, 4 antibody to get into uh, the interstitial fluid of the uh, synovium, and then and that will trigger the um, joint symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, but it's slightly more complicated than that. You do need a microbial insult, but you need something before that, okay? And the reason that you need this extra step is that if that was what happened, the amount of anti-citrullinated protein 4 antibody that would get in for uh, the increase in vasopermeability that, for instance, mechanical insult to the joint would cause is going to be minute and probably isn't enough to set off uh, the synovitis of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So instead you need something that's hugely going to amplify the response up. Okay, so what happens is that you start producing an antibody that is directed against citrullinated fibrinogen. Okay, so there is a protein within the blood called fibrinogen, okay? And fibrinogen is so important that it also has an old name. So it's also called coagulation factor 1.
Okay, so it's incredibly important in the coagulation cascade. It is the um, precursor, basically, to fibrin, and uh, fibrin is the component of fibrin strands. So when um, when you set off the intrinsic and the extrinsic coagulation cascades, the overall result of these cascades is that you get the conversion of fibrinogen into, firstly, fibrin, which is also called factor 1A. Okay, so it's also referred to as 1A. And then fibrin is assembled into polymers, okay? And it's assembled into fibrin strands. So, um, that's the process of coagulation, basically. So fibrinogen is an inert uh, compound within the blood. Well, it's a, it's a protein within the blood uh, that can be activated to fibrin, and then fibrin can be assembled into fibrin strands in the process of coagulation. This conversion of fibrinogen, which is circulating within the blood, to fibrin is known as coagulation. Okay, so in the blood, you have circulating fibrinogen. Okay, now, some of this fibrinogen may well be converted into citrullinated fibrinogen. Okay, and now what's going to happen is, in your, um, in your lack of immune tolerance against citrullinated uh, proteins, what is going to happen is uh, you're eventually going to produce an antibody against citrullinated fibrinogen. So remember, in the pre-articular stage, what's been happening is that you've gradually been making more and more antibodies against a greater and greater array of citrullinated proteins. So we started with making an antibody against citrullinated protein 1, then we chose a new target, which was citrullinated protein 2, and you just got um, continuous failure in immunological tolerance, and gradually you've launched more and more humor-adaptive immune responses, and produced more and more antibodies which are against these auto-antigens. Now, eventually, citrullinated fibrinogen is going to get targeted, and you're going to produce an anti-citrullinated fibrinogen antibody. So let me write that down. That's a big uh, piece of terminology. So an anti-citrullinated fibrinogen antibody, okay? An antibody that is targeted against citrullin uh, citrullinated fibrinogen. Okay, now why is this so significant? Well, it's significant because fibrinogen is present within the blood, basically. So, when you dump anti-citrullinated fibrinogen antibody into the blood, it's going to actually meet citrullinated fibrinogen. So you're going to get antigen-antibody complexes forming within the blood. Okay, so let me show this. So here is our uh, immune complex here. Right, uh, so this is the anti-citrullinated fibrinogen antibody, and this is the citrullinated fibrinogen here. Now, what then appears to happen is that you get uh, some sort of microbial insult or some sort of mechanical insult to the joint, and this is specifically going to occur in distal extremity joints, and the reason for that isn't very well understood. And what's going to happen is these immune complexes, as they're called, which is another name for this antigen-antibody complex, they're called immune complexes, these are then going to activate um, the uh, inflammatory response, the acute inflammatory response within uh, the um, distal extremity synovial joints, okay? And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.